Welcome back to CarnDeities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between vagueness, ambiguity, and generality. Now, vagueness is an important term in philosophy, referring to a particular type of object or predicate that has borderline cases, where the term cannot be fully specified no matter how much you investigate into it, which gives rise to all sorts of philosophical issues, such as the Sorites Paradox, also called the Paradox of the Heap, check out our video on that. Ambiguity and generality are related terms, but they are importantly distinct, and they're much less philosophically problematic. So in this video, we're going to talk about what the differences are between vagueness, ambiguity, and generality. So, can a matchbox? No, but a tin can. Starting with the clearer terms, an ambiguous term is one with multiple different definitions. Words like bank are ambiguous because it's unclear if they're referring to the side of a river or a financial institution. This can be challenging since these words are often vague as well. Where exactly does the bank of the river start and end? At this blade of grass? At the next one? So the word bank is both ambiguous because it could refer either to the bank of a river or a financial institution, and vague because it's there are borderline cases, absolute borderline cases, where it's unclear if this blade of grass is on the bank of the river or if it's not. Generality, on the other hand, occurs when a term has a clear meaning but could refer to any number of multiple objects. A term like a prime number is general because it could refer to any one of an infinite number of primes. However, a prime number is not vague since there are no real borderline cases. Either a number can be divided evenly by exactly two unique factors, or it cannot. However, a term like a tall man is both general and vague. It could refer to a number of tall men. There are many different tall men out there. And there are men who are borderline cases of being tall. This leads us back to vagueness. Vagueness occurs when a term contains absolute borderline cases, in other words, situations where no amount of inquiry can determine whether the term applies to them or not. How sparse does your hair need to be to be considered bald? How many grains of sand make a heap? Where does Mount Everest start? The problem is that while we seem to talk about things like baldness, heaps, and Mount Everest, there are borderline cases for each of those where it's unclear if something could be categorized by that predicate or not, and no amount of counting the number of hairs on someone's head, the number of grains of sand in the heap, or the distance to the summit of Mount Everest is going to be able to determine definitively if that predicate applies. Absolute borderline cases do not include things that could be resolved with further investigation, such as whether a person or not a person has a chondroplasia, but rather cases where nothing could determine if the case fits in the term or not, such as whether or not a person is short. Shortness has absolute borderline cases where there's nothing we could do to determine if that word would apply. And therefore, it's vague. One question is the use of each of these concepts. It seems like ambiguous terms are generally a pain that lead to confusion and fail to serve a purpose. If we just use different words, little would be lost beyond the opportunity for fun wordplay. While general terms seem to have a real use in a different way, it's useful to be able to make statements about general categories of things without referring to any specific one. It's useful for me to be able to say all prime numbers or all tall men. However, there is a question as to the usefulness of vagueness. Do we need terms that have cases where it's inherently impossible to determine if they fit? Or is this just a sloppiness in our language? If we got rid of all of our vague terms or clearly defined them, would we lose something important about the way we speak? Would it be beneficial to be able to say, is that a heap of sand? I don't know, count the grains and find out if it's over 400 or not. 
for example. Now, there's much more to say on vagueness, including the problems it creates and how various philosophers have tried to address it, which we'll need to await another video. For now, here's a curious challenge. Some, such as Frege, have argued that vague predicates are incoherent, that they're nonsense that we use in ordinary speech but can't be meaningfully translated into specific formal language. And therefore, we can treat sentences that have them as essentially meaningless when we're worried about really formalizing language. The problem is that the concept of vagueness itself seems to have borderline cases. A term like twilight, which is explicitly the borderline case between day and night, is that vague or not? Some might say that, well, it's clearly not vague because any amount of darkness you start to get immediately becomes twilight, while as others might say, yes, it is vague because there is that vague boundary. There are borderline cases between when day and twilight start and don't start. For these terms, no amount of inquiry can determine if a term is vague or not. Is there another term we need to add? Is twilight the borderline case between day and night and there's another additional recursive period of time in between day and twilight that we need to add? Because for these terms, no amount of inquiry can determine if they're vague or not, it would render the term vague itself to be vague. And that means that the claim that vague terms are meaningless would itself be meaningless if it's true, since it includes a vague term, namely vagueness itself, and therefore such a claim would be self defeating. And so you have this problem of just trying to eliminate vagueness by calling it meaningless because it may be that vague itself is in some way meaningless. What do you think? How many stones make a heap? When does dusk start? When does someone truly die? Are vague terms actually useful for our lives as general terms are? Or do they just engender confusion and comedy as ambiguous ones do? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org. Subscribe if you like this content, you'd like to see more, hit the like button, uh, donate on Patreon, all those good things. And stay skeptical, everybody.